welcome to another issue of Eye on the Issues. Uh, and joining me right now is Lisa McCarty. She is a vet tech, uh, which means she works with animals. Let's begin by finding out exactly what a vet tech does. Lisa? Hi. Um, yeah, veterinary, veterinary technicians are um, kind of jack of all trades. They do everything uh, from waiting on the customers to uh, bringing the pets back, x-rays, um, anesthesia, um, giving medications, all of the things that the doctors need, any type of procedures, all of that, we kind of encompass whatever needs to happen in the in the back. <laughs> And with marijuana getting legalized more in more and more states, both medically and recreationally, uh, tell us how that could possibly impact pets. Now, now where where are you? And you're you're seeing more of that, aren't you, in California? Yeah. So um, I think in the last few years we've seen more um, because uh, of medical uh, grade THC instead of just natural THC. Um, we've seen a lot more. Um, cases where pets are coming in with higher toxicities than we did uh, in previous years. So, and then the fact that it's legal, um, people have more access to it and pets are have more access to what they have in the house. So we've seen uh, a lot more in the last few years just for that reason. And, and what are the symptoms? How would you know if a dog or cat or cat had gotten into some kind of edible marijuana? Okay. Well, um, the first symptoms are usually just like people, you're going to see uh, dilated, um, their eyes are dilated, they're going to salivate a lot, you're going to see depression, um, ataxia, where they're kind of falling over, um, the cats vocalize really loud, they kind of get uh, to where when you try to pet them, they get panicky because it affects their nervous system. So, And, and it is... Uh, cannabis actually toxic for pets or at least can it be it can it can be and especially um if they have underlying health issues um so it, the medical grade is a little higher so if they get a higher toxicity from a smaller amount and they have underlying health issues like heart uh heart failure or heart problems or respiratory problems or uh, pre-existing neurological problems um it definitely causes them a lot more um, uh, long-term effects than, or could cause them fatal effects where if they're healthy and young, um, it kind of, they just kind of ride it out uh, and not have as many problems, so. But you have yeah. seen pets that have been brought into to you and to your veterinary clinic that, that have passed away, is that correct? Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, <laughs> that's the sad part of it is, you know, a small chihuahua that has pre-existing heart conditions, uh, which is also, you know, just like humans, we give them the same medications. Um, if they're already on medications and they have they eat too much and their heart starts beating too fast and they their respiratory gets too high um, and we can't reverse that. We try to do our best with fluids and medications, but um, if we can't reverse it in the time it takes before that uh, marijuana kind of wears off, then, uh, then that's when we see uh, fatalities from that. Most of the time, it's just that case that someone in the house has it, a pet got into it, someone finds it, then they don't know what's wrong with it. If they can have seizures, they get, they get ataxic, um, so they're falling over, and they're drooling, and they're hypersensitive, so when you go to pet them, you know, they swing away from you and sometimes bite and things like that because their perception is off, you know, and... Uh, that's when they bring them into the hospital because they're not sure exactly what's going on. <laughs> and, and so what do you do to treat them? So um, unfortunately there is no cure or a, a reversal for marijuana or THC. Um, so we kind of have to ride it out with them. Um, we treat their symptoms. So depending on the pet and how their health is in the first place, um, whether they can just kind of, we can give them something for their nausea and, you know, their euphoria and kind of let them be quiet 
and work it out or if they have to be treated for medications to control their heart rate because they get tachycardic or brachycardic depending on high or low heart rates, respiratory issues, you know, if they have to go in oxygen, things like that. It just kind of varies on their, their general health in the beginning. So, but it's all treating the symptoms of the marijuana. We can't actually reverse it. So. And, and how often do you actually see people bring their pets in because of some them, for them ingesting some kind of marijuana a couple times a month? or once a week or I would say a, a few times a week at least you know I I mostly work weekends and that was a typical case two to two to three a weekend you know in California so <laughs> that was kind of normal um for ER but and, and, you know, this is a different world when it comes to to marijuana the potency of it you know now compared to 25 years ago or right. 30 years ago. I and mean, that, that makes a big difference, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's, you know, like I said before, we didn't see any really ever see a fatality hardly ever from it at this point because of the, the higher doses in the edibles. We do see um, pets pass away from it. They go into the coma or seizure state and then pass away from those symptoms of the marijuana causing that, you know, to happen. So and what do you think people that have pets like a dog or a cat and that also use marijuana, what do they need to know to make sure their pet stays safe? I think it's, you know, we classify dogs and cats kind of like children in that aspect. You know, we treat them like our children. We pay for their health care like our children in a lot of ways nowadays where we it wasn't like that before. But it's, it's the same thing. You know, you're protecting them from um things that they shouldn't do just like you do children you keep them from burning themselves or eating the getting under the sink and getting into toxins it's the same thing with your pets if you're going to have those things around they definitely need to be put away where that your where your pets can't ever get to them you know and has there been an influx of thc cases since marijuana has been legalized in california has have you seen that jump yeah. dramatically Absolutely. In the last couple of years, definitely. Um, it's been a lot higher, a lot more cases that come through the, the emergency room door than previously. And so uh, let, let's, if you, can you give us a, another example of somebody that brought their, and, and they, they came in and they told you what happened and how they yeah. think their pet probably got access to the marijuana. Can you just tell us a little story possibly? Yeah. So we had a um, little husky, he was about a year and a half old, and uh, they had made a, a whole container of butter with the, the marijuana in it that they used for their toast and things like that. And they'd left it out on the counter and the uh, husky ate the whole entire tub, which is a, a huge toxicity. And at that point, you know, it was uh, medical grade. It wasn't, or manufactured, it wasn't natural. Um, so when they brought her into us, um, she was already having seizures and, um, you know, they were kind of panicked because she was already in those stages of, you know, not being able to be woken up, having seizures, and they were afraid that she was going to pass away. So we had to treat her like a pet <clears throat> that has all those problems and give her all kinds of medications. And she had to remain in hospital for about three days. And so I, I understand you deal a lot with cancer issues in pets. Um, I understand they get treated with CBD. What's the difference between the effects of THC and CBD in pets? Can you tell us that? Um, yeah. So I was an oncology tech and I treated pets for cancer. That was my work week days. And uh, so we, as veterinarians, we can't recommend to give CBD because uh, they don't control the amounts that are in um the tablets or the chewies or whatever it is that are sold. So um, the veterinarians don't ever recommend giving CBD oil to the pets because they don't know how it'll affect them because they don't know from one manufacturer to another how high the CBD is, what grade it is, how good it is. Um, but a lot of our patients, they're 
owners took it upon themselves to treat their pets with CBD, um, hoping to deal with some of the neuropathy and uh, uh, inappetence, not wanting to eat, um, things like that, that comes with cancer in general, which is why humans take it. So it's kind of you know, the same, the same issues they're trying to make sure their pets are continuing to eat, um, continue to not have inflammation or swelling of the lymph nodes and things like that. They try to use it for those aspects. Um, I can't say that I saw a huge difference. I think the biggest difference I saw was just, um, <clears throat> them wanting to eat better during times of, you know, treatment and high nausea. But other than that, clinically, um, seen pets for years, never really saw a huge difference in um, how it affected them. Toxicity-wise, um, I have, we do have pets come in through the clinic that their owners would buy it over the counter, and it was just the CBD, not the not the the full strength stuff. And they would, because of the other ingredients along with that, have uh, usually digestive issues, diarrhea, vomiting. Uh, salvation things like that but not really uh the neurological um things that come along with the thc you know of course many pets get a uh, little anxious anxiety is boosted during thunderstorms is it a myth or is there any truth to the fact that that the, uh, marijuana if you give it to a pet during a thunderstorm would calm them down um Outside of the clinic, of course, you know, just like going to the hospital, pets have a lot of anxiety about coming into a vet clinic. They feed off their owners about anxiety of paying for things, and they have anxiety of treatment, and then the pets have anxiety. So treating pets for cancer, we see them weekly. And <clears throat> being able to see if that medication actually helped them when they started giving it or not, it really didn't. We we prescribed a um, medications for anxiety because the CBD really didn't help in that aspect. The the clinical medications that we, you know, prescribed to help them be calm when they came in were the only things that really affected them. So I don't, I never really saw that that helped a ton. So let me ask you what your advice would be for a state like pet owners in a state like Wyoming, for example, where marijuana is not legalized either medically or recreationally, what what would you say to them? I know right now there's been a lot of pushback to kind of keep marijuana the legalization out. Um, some people want it, but but more want don't want it there. What, what's your advice to, to to Wyoming? I think my advice is just from the you know seeing what I've seen in the medical field um, that anytime something is more accessible, accidents come along with it whether it be your pets having it or your um, children having it or anything like that. You know, um, I also work as a phlebotomist at the hospital here in Cheyenne and I see, you know, people coming in with toxicities also. So I think the more you see it, availability of it, the more toxicity you see. So as a state, if you can do something to prevent that from occurring easily. I think that's definitely something you should do. Okay. Is there anything that I'm not asking that you would like to add about this topic? Um, I don't think so. I think we covered a lot. <laughs> yeah, we did. Okay. All right, Lisa, thank you for joining us for Eye on the Issues. Appreciate your time. You're welcome. Thank you. Have a great day.